water would benefit from some kind of parade. I heard that too. Hello. Listen to that jibber jabber. That Bonnie is a right pretty girl. Why are you always partner. talking about this person and that person? Howdy, mister. I'm eagerly awaiting delivery of a new variety of bone saw. Much obliged. Please be aware of a social disease carried by a certain young lady. I always like to do business. I don't trust that Jeremiah Somerset with his plans. I like some change, but not too much change. My apologies, madam. Sir, please. I'm a lady. Come on in. Take a look. Hey, mister. I'm sure you'll find something you like here. Thanks a lot. Oh, Mr. Marston, how are you doing today? I'm well, Miss McFarland. Thank you. How are you? Well, I'm fine. Thank you. So, uh, how are your ribs? Fine. A little sore, but apart from a couple extra scars, it'll be as nothing happened. Good. Uh, come in, come in. You know, you never did tell me how you met that Bill Williamson or what you wanted from him. No, miss, I did not. Well, why not, if you don't mind me asking? I certainly don't mind you asking if you don't mind me not telling. See, it's a complicated and somewhat pathetic tale, and 
by telling you not only would I be putting your life in danger, but also threatening the lives of some people that I hold very dear. Well, I apologize if I seem to be prying. And I apologize for my reticence. Hope you believe me when I say that it's simply out of respect for you. Of course, Mr. Marston. I understand that a city dweller such as yourself likes to have some exotic secrets, so us country folk are impressed. <laughs> I'm no city man, miss. Yeah, but I saw you get on the train at Blackwater. You with those gentlemen in bowler hats? I'm still no city man. But I'll bet you can't ride, Mr. Marston. I hate to take money from a lady, miss. <laughs> oh, you won't be. I'll race you right now. If it makes you happy. We'll see. All right, I'll show you how we ride around these parts. Let's go. On the count of three. Three, two, one, go! I trust you're not gonna be a gentleman about this. You don't know me at all, Miss McFarland. How are you today? Yeah. Right. Sure. You know, you should go pay the marshal a visit in Armadillo sometime. I'm sure he could help you deal with that nice Mr. Williamson. Yeah, I might just do that, Miss McFarland. You do whatever you think's best, Mr. Marston. Mr. 
Mr. Marston, how are you? Good, Miss McFarland. How are you? I'm well. Would you mind riding with me to Armadillo? I've got to get some supplies and I could do with the company. Of course. You can take the reins. It wouldn't do for a terrifying bounty hunter such as yourself to be seen driven around by a woman. <laughs> Hop on up, Mr. Marston. If you don't mind, I'd really like to get moving. You're looking much better, considering you were almost buzzard food a couple days ago. I have you to thank for that, miss. So do tell me, have you needlessly risked your life since we last spoke? No, miss, I have not. Well, that's a relief. Perhaps there's hope for you yet. I wouldn't bet on it. Oh, there's always hope, Mr. Marston. You can't be a rancher in this kind of country if you don't believe that. An admirable attitude, miss. I suppose so. I can't think of any other way to put that down. Mr. Marston. I think it's kind of funny I found you dying on the side of the road and now you're driving me into town. You have a strange sense of humor. Well, you must admit, it's an unusual start to a friendship. I didn't realize we were friends, Mr. McFarland. Oh, please. Now who's being funny? Listen, I know that business with Williamson is your business, but I don't know, you've been good to us, and I don't think you're a bad man. A little stupid, perhaps, but not rotten. I just worry about you gallivanting around these parts like you're some kind of deranged bounty hunter. Like Paul always says, don't go waking snakes. I appreciate your concern for us lesser mortals, Miss McFarland. I really do. Stay on the main road. These horse trails will destroy the wagon. Man, if there was any other way out, I'd take it. I can assure you of that. You never did tell me where you live. I have a small holding up in Great Plains. A farmer? Yeah, and I'm the Queen of England. And at what point during your day of hunting down outlaws do you find time to raise chickens? Only been at it three years or so. I guess I'm kind of new to it. You're telling me? So who's looking after this farm of yours right now? Uncle. Well, he's not my uncle, as far as I know. Just an old dog who's as lazy as a lizard on a hot day. He kind of fell in laboring under the delusion that age brings wisdom. Uh, sounds like the perfect person to leave in charge of your entire livelihood. We go way back, and I didn't have a lot of choice. I'd be getting back there if I was you. That's what I'm trying to do, miss. coming down here many times, but never made it. Who's we? Me and the folks I used to, used to work with. Yeah, New Austin, the last real outlaw country, where the old ways still hold true. You do a man wrong, he'll shoot you for it. You do a man right, well, he still may shoot you for it, but at least you have an idea of what's right and what's wrong there. Dear, oh dear, Mr. Marston, what dreadful knowledge you get that romanticized drivel out of. Those days are long gone, if they were ever here at all. According to Paul, those days were just people shooting each other because they lost the card. We'll be lucky if our ranch survives another five years. Businessmen are the new cowboys. You look like a man who's been through the mill. Uh, thank you. I mean, you've lived some life. I'm 27 years old and I have rarely left Hennigan's stead. Although many years ago, we did briefly employ a French governess. Well, I think she was French. She said she was French, but she spoke Russian. That was when Paul thought I would become a lady. A change of pasture doesn't always make for a fatter calf. I know, and I wouldn't change my life for all the money in the world. I'm just saying, 
Sometimes I wish I'd been, well, braver. Been to more places, seen more things. So this is Armadillo. Manhattan it is not, but it does okay for us. important thing for you right now is getting yourself into Dr. Johnson's office to purchase some medicine. The first one's on me. Thank you, miss. I'll pay you back. I'm sure you shall. The doc's a good fellow. He saved your life, so be polite to him. Meet me in front of the general store when you're done. Excellent to see you today. How are you, mister? I got stock of them electric belts, uh, and you need to lose weight. Tim Thank you kindly. Stay away from the salt pork and Well, thanks for driving me. It was nice to be able to enjoy the view for once. And a little company never hurts now and again. You're more than welcome, miss. Least I can do. Thank you for the medicine. Why don't you have a look around Armadillo? You can always take a stagecoach back to the ranch later. I might just do that. Travel safely, miss. Try not to get yourself shot. I won't be around to save you this time. That's a good idea. Probably made right here in the USA. Why, thank you. I can't wait. That mouth of yours is welcome here in the truck. Excuse me. Got a visitor. <coughs> Shut up, you. And what you want? 
My name's John Marston. You wanted to speak to me. I did? Apparently so. Why? I guess because we're both in the business of the law. You that fella from the train company? No, I'm from Fort Mercer. Fort Mercer? You them, one of them Williamson boys. Calm down. Go on, shoot him, mister. Shoot him. <laughs> Come what, you, you getting cute with me, boy? What's going on here? I got me one of them Williamson boys. I got me one of them idiots who give marshals a bad name. Oh, no. Put your gun down. You must be the man from Blackwater. Yes, sir. Listen, that dog ain't too bright, but he seems loyal. Jonah, get out of here for a minute. Yes, sir, Mr. Johnson, sir. And you. Oh, I done seen enough of your hide around here, friend. <laughs> I think there's some school children down the way you can go and frighten. Oh, hardy fucking whore. Dickhead. <laughs> What are you doing here, Mr. Marston? Apart from frightening my deputies. I'm here to capture or kill Bill Williamson. <laughs> okay. Can you help me? He's outside my jurisdiction. He's in the next county. Of course, Bill Williamson and his boys have tended to keep themselves away from my town. So you're happy to have him out there? Well, I ain't happy, but I also ain't suicidal. My job is to keep this town safe, not clean up all of these three counties. It's hard enough around here. You know, I hear you speak, and suddenly I'm reminded of how some of the people I respected most in my life had a problem with authority. What's wrong with you? Well, I'm sure you and your fine friends have enjoyed spending your time running around pursuing noble causes. My cause is to keep this town from turning into a living hell for the folks who live here. The whole world has problems, mister, and I'm here doing what I can. Why? What's happening? Right now? I got the railway, the people who pay my salary, trying to get me to turn a blind eye to them burning down settlements up there. I got a bunch of cattle rustlers out near Box Canyon needs shutting down. Not forgetting the gang that keeps murdering homesteaders out in the back country. And I got a bunch of hoods over in the saloon, drunk, threatening to shoot up the whole town. That's all I got today. But it's early yet. Give me a couple more days. There'll be more. All right. Tell you what. Let's go deal with them hoods in the saloon. Then we'll discuss Williamson. Okay, boy. You're a persistent little cuss, ain't you? Only when things matter. The saloon's this way. So who are we looking for? Bunch of two-bit hoodlums, led by this fella called Walton. Goddamn road agents who prey on the stages coming in and out of town. Drivers and armadillos spend more time with their hands in the air than on the reins these days. And you're happy to let them drink in your saloon? Happy? No. But the way I figure it, better they're carousing in there than out robbing decent folk. That's an interesting approach to law enforcement. I do what I can, Mr. Marston. We ain't the government. Is the dumb rat bastard now. Let's follow him. See what kind of hole he crawls into. Mount up, Marston. Walton's our man. God damn it, he's on to us. Get after him. Catch me up. I don't want to let that bastard get away. Yeah. 
Walton's as bad as you say he is. Why don't we just beef him now while we got the chance? Hey, with him. I don't want to lose him. Come! Yeah! Like we got company, boys. <laughs> Damn. Take cover. We'll work our way up this hill. Move up to that wagon on your right. I'll cover you. Not a bad shot, Mr. Marston. Why don't you check in with me next time you're in town? I don't want to be no policeman, Marshal. <laughs> Nor did I, my friend. I can promise you that. I'll see you soon, Mr. Marston.